making smart decisions when it comes to our skin during the hot summer months is very important. So how do you handle the sun, the sweat and the sun exposure? In this week's Medical Center Health Systems Taking Care of You, we're getting some answers from the expert. Our guest today is Sarah Fuller. She is a registered nurse from the MCH Laser and Wellness Center. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you for having it's me. It's been too long. I love this topic, <laughs> as you well know. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess the basic starts with sunscreen. So what are some of the, some of the myths and the, the things we do wrong when it comes to sunscreen? Okay. Um, the big thing I try to tell people when choosing a sunscreen is choose a sunscreen you're going to use. Okay. Um, if you have an SPF 50 sunscreen or an SPF 15 sunscreen, if you're using the SPF 50 incorrectly, but the SPF 15 correctly, that one's going to give you better protection. Okay. Is there a magic number that you like to tell people to use? Um, I, you know, they'll say SPF 15 or higher. I think National Institute of Health recommends SPF 30 or higher, okay. um, but at least SPF 15 to protect from, you know, both UVA and UVB rays. And that's a big thing too. make sure your sunscreen is broad spectrum. It needs to protect from both. Um, one myth is that UVA rays are, you know, not as harmful as UVB. Um, UVB radiation does cause a lot of the sun burns, but UVA causes just as much skin cancer, aging, mm -hmm. uh, problems like that. So it needs to be broad spectrum to protect from both to prevent those problems. Okay, so when you go out, are you saying face, obviously, neck, ears, would you do arms? Any I mean, exposed areas, uh, sometimes even underneath your clothing if you're going to be outside for a prolonged period of time. Okay, what about SPF in your makeup? Is that enough? Um, sunscreen in your makeup is not enough. Uh, okay. What they recommend for your sunscreen as far as application and to prevent, you know, sun damage and aging is that you need to reapply every two hours if you're getting, you know, anything wet or a lot of sweating every 40 minutes to 80 minutes. Okay. So most people are not reapplying their makeup every two hours. Yeah. So that's the problem with sunscreen in your makeup. It's a, you know, most people, um, if you're going to be outside for a long period of time, you're going to need something additional as far as sunscreen to put it back on. And so. we've heard so much recently about the early burns in our lives. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when I grew up, I was sunburned all the time. And really researchers are saying this yeah, is an indicator it, for skin cancer. Yeah, it puts you at much higher, much higher risk for skin cancer. So um, people with a family history of skin cancer, obviously people with lighter skin tones or people who live in higher elevations um, are all going to be at higher risk for skin cancer, but they're also finding too people with heavy sun exposure, whether it's from outdoors, whether it's from uh, tanning beds under the age 18, you're at much higher risk for developing skin cancer later in life. But most of us who are moms are pretty good about applying to our kids. So apply, reapply and reapply. But I think our husbands too, I mean, when they're golfing, Absolutely. my husband's neck is always sunburned ears. We got to have that conversation. With yeah. Them. If you're going to be outdoors for more than 30 minutes, um, then they need sunscreen too. And again, um, I understand uh, some of the sunscreens can be very sticky. They leave a white film. Um, just keep trying them. Find the one that you're going to use correctly and make sure you're applying the correct amount too. I love the line that they sell at the Laser and Wellness Center. I've used it. I think it's awesome. If you have any questions, give Sarah a call. They're located out at the Mission Fitness Building and I really like the product. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me.